from Las Vegas. It's the Q covering Oracle's modern marketing experience. Brought to you by Oracle. Now here's your host, John Furrier and Peter Burris. Hey, welcome back everyone. We are here live in Las Vegas for Oracle's Modern Marketing Experience. This is SiliconANGLE's The Cube. This is our flagship program where we go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier with SiliconANGLE. I'm showing with my co-host Peter Burris, Chief Research Officer of SiliconANGLE Media and Wikibon. Our next guest is Adrian Chang, Director of Customer Programs at Oracle Marketing Cloud. Welcome to The Cube. John and Peter, thanks for having me. Thanks for coming on. We know uh, it's super exciting. We see all the photos on, on Twitter. I saw the event stuff last night in the stream, a lot of social activity. A lot of people love doing the, the, the tweets and a lot, the pictures are great. The marquees were last night. Yep. Give us your take. What's going on on the ground here in Vegas? Yeah, so the marquees honor excellence in modern marketing. They started in 2007 and they started with very modest beginnings in a room with 160 people at the W in San Francisco. So now we're here in Las Vegas. There's over 2,500 people that attended last night. It was fantastic. We went from honoring six categories in just email marketing to 19 categories for activation, cross So Marquis is, a, is a, 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 like the Oscars or the, or the, uh, the, uh, the Grammys, if you will, for Great way marketing. to put it, great way to put it. However, the statue was actually designed by the same firm that made the Emmys. Okay, got yeah. it, all right. So we have an Emmy connection. Good, all right, so, yeah. so this is to highlight what? Creativity, effectiveness, what's some of the criteria you guys look for as the, uh, the bar to be considered? And just give us some highlights. Yeah, so I'd say it comes down to three things. You have to have great content, you have to have great story, and you have to have results. And so I, there's an image of me in social that we use to promote the marquees where I'm sitting by a stack of all 350 submissions printed, and it was crazy. We had more, we had 80% more submissions this year than previous, and so customers just went nuts with telling us stories, making videos, we had 60 videos accompanied the 350 submissions, so we decided to do a best video category to celebrate all the creative that customers put together to show how they're getting value from Marketing Cloud. So video is pretty key in all that, all submissions. Really key. So really what's the, what key. was the winner, who was the winner? Give us the highlight. The winner of the video was Cisco, yes. And so there was another customer that was actually in the lead leading up to it, and right before polls closed, it changed, and we knew that Cisco was going to win. Right by, by a, right by a nose. All right, so give us some, give us some take, because we love talking about customers, because you know, right now, this is a real dynamic area. I wrote a post on Forbes in 2014 talking about the marketing cloud, yes. how it's got to be really easy like Amazon, but it's hard. Marketing has some legacies, some data, databases, kind of schemas, if you will, depending upon the kind of channel you're in. There's a lot of cross-channel opportunities. Right. It's total chaos right now, in a good way. What are some of the success stories look like? Share some customer use cases where um, the pattern is uh, uh, trending, if you will. Yeah, so I'd say this year more than any, the marketing cloud marquee winners focus more on helping their customers. I think for the past six years, I've seen a lot of stories on acquiring customers. Now it's about creating that journey and getting results. And so Juniper won last night for their lead management program and they created a digital hub that allows you to globally personalize experiences and they saw win rates and lead volume improve between 700 to 900 percent. Ridiculous. Um, and so that was awesome. So the personalization seems to be a big thing. Personalization is super key. Uh, the customer that won for uh, the customer that won for best email was Jetstar and they used a kinetic process that allows you to dynamically populate the email based on the customer's preferences. So when you're about to book a flight, you now get a really super personalized email that allows you to cross sell and upsell, which I think is exciting. So the engagement is another key part. Is that, that coming out in the, in the data you're seeing? It is, the engagement is such a big part. So we're looking at it not just in one channel, but across device and through mobile and social. And so this is real. We've been talking about this for a long time with Oracle Marketing Cloud. Our customers are actually doing it. So Adrian, are you starting to consider not just the results from the marketer standpoint, but every example that you've given when you talk about engagement, the winner did something that was valuable for the customer in addition to doing something that was valuable for the brand. Are you actually starting to factor in the conversations from customers about some of these programs or some of these campaigns or some of these interactions, or is that something that might be a little bit ways off? 
Great question. So we actually do have it. And so in, there was Teltra's check-in campaign where they actually showed that their attentiveness to the customer increased rates of satisfaction. And so we had tons of customer quotes. The customer's at the heart of more submissions this year than ever. So we had more stories around retention, about experience, about repairing the broken buyer experience. We had a lot of customers that had very poor shopping experiences, and that all got repaired, and the customers talked about it. So we got to hear through the customer in the submissions, with quotes, with data, and with proof that satisfaction was on the rise. So the markets themselves are out actually starting to reach out and do what you're telling your clients and your customers to do, reach out to the customer, because that's ultimately the where the, where the real test is. Absolutely, absolutely. And, it, and it's so great that those programs continue to flourish. We're hearing how the technology's helping the customers reach their customers, mm -hmm. but we're also getting more in customer experience and more about the, them making the leap to digital, which isn't easy, but our customers are doing it and they're figuring it out and they're working with us to do it. So I had a chance to stand with Mark Hurd for an interview in uh, January. And obviously he's on the cloud message. We all know marketing cloud, right. it's all cloud. It kind of fits in. So uh, I got to ask the cloud question because this is interesting, right? Cloud is supposed to accelerate value. Yes. Okay, one, I want to get your thoughts on that. And two, in context to that, share the notion of agile. Because agile uh, is a DevOps term around how people are building apps because you're starting to see the customer experience be driven by the user experience of software. Yes. So now you've got a software, and it's, has to have a database, of course Oracle's in the database business, but you guys just aren't a database. Now you have a lot of different in, uh, products in your portfolio. How is the cloud making you guys provide more agile capabilities in context to this notion of software experience? You know, it, the cloud is so strategic for us and it's important because even for me as a buyer, my preferences are fluid and so the cloud allows you to integrate and innovate in real time. And so you can find attributes about my buying behavior, my history, and through our integrations, be able to create an experience that's worthwhile for me, that will build trust, and I'm more likely to buy. And so I think that's why the cloud is important and strategic. Now, the second part of your question. The agile, the software was the piece. Agile piece. How do you be more agile, so be responsive? So, for instance, real time is big, right? You know, you talk about the preferences with the email program, from email to any other engagement or interaction needs data. It needs right? data. So yes, is the absolutely. data available? And can I integrate yes. it? And is it real time? Is it quality? So yes. all these things are sound simple, but they're really difficult. What are you guys doing to make that easy to stand up, to integrate? Yeah, so, so Dell won uh, their second marquee in the same category this year, so they defended it for their best use of audience data and audience creation. And so they do some really cool things. They recognize that they wanted to try to drive more people to a buyer portal and they actually went out and found the profiles of the executives that came to, their pro to this one portal, and it's people with travel patterns, they're frequent flyers, they found attributes that they couldn't find anywhere else that would probably take a long time to append. And so, being programmatic and then looking at that and saying, hmm, I should actually talk to these people through my ads and display is one example of how customers are being more agile, more programmatic. Now when you add Maximizer into the mix and do the testing, you now take the risk out of having a bad buyer experience because you're able to, you know, you take, you, you take the gambling out of it, yeah, yeah. right? We're in Vegas, so you yeah. take the risk out of it and you're able to deliver on the right you customer take, experience. You never take the risk out of Vegas. <laughs> but one quick question, so you, you, you said there were 3,500 submissions. Well, no, there were, um, there were, eight, there were 2,500 people. 2,500 people, yeah. I'm sorry. And then so, we had 350 submissions. 350 submissions. Yes. Oh, it's only off by a factor of 10. Oh, uh, it doesn't matter. But 350 <laughs> submissions, you and your team looked at them and, and then made the, made the evaluations. Yes. When you looked at the submissions, where did they tend to come from? Did they tend to come from marketing people? From IT people? Combination of both? So as you read the submissions, are you starting to see over the years the flavor of the language and the orientation and the goals and objectives? Is it starting to evolve? And, and talk about how that may reflect some of the things that people are trying to do here. Great question. And so we saw, it's still the majority of we're marketers. We still have some IT people submitting, 
But we had more senior executives submit this year than ever before. So we had more VPs of marketing submit than ever before, more senior directors, more senior leaders, because they're driving the change and putting the strategy together, and then telling the story of how that strategy you know, came to life with real results and revenue. And, and understanding both sides of it, so they feel confident and comfortable that they can speak to both the marketing and the technology side of it as well. Absolutely. That's interesting. Absolutely. So we have a sales and, sales and marketing alignment category where they have to prove that the marketing team has built a significant relationship with sales in metrics and in culture and in process. And so, you know, you have to prove it to get, you to, get to the final stage. And with 350 submissions, there are a lot of really great stories that we weren't able to tell. This was the hardest year than ever to win a marquee. So you just got to put, can you put all this on a microsite, just stand them up so people can consume them, the videos? Yes, yeah, so they, they will be live on marquee-awards.com. Marquee-awards. Okay, so I got to ask you the question, for the folks watching, okay, hey, I should maybe want to submit, or hey, I want to just get the marketing cloud up and running, what can you share is some of the patterns that you're seeing for people that are really active right now in deploying solutions? It could be use cases, it could be you know, the omni-channel piece, um, anything particular in the, in, in, in the kinds of things people are doing that you see repeating over and over again as a, as a success? Great question. And so I see there's a lot of focus on trying to optimize the inbound experience. So using ad tech to find the right customer, the right person that's likely to buy. There's also, from a customer perspective, making sure that you optimize the onboarding or that first impression where they become a customer. Making sure you deliver on that sales process. So more than ever, I saw more submissions focusing on ideal onboarding, journeys, using data on their usage to tell the customer. Select Comfort, for example, mm -hmm. we told this story during the marquees, the sleep number personalizes your emails. Right, so there's more integrating with the, your systems to make that experience richer, and that's what I'm seeing from a customer perspective. So some of the questions I had for, that, for this show that I'm, I'm looking to get uh, clarity on is the shift from the old way to the new way. The old way, yes. um, not that there's anything wrong with it, it's more infrastructure driven, coded URLs, all the monitoring in the funnel, all the tools you guys have, essentially becomes hardened infrastructure. Pretty much no debate about that, there's still, still relevance, not like it's a rip and replace, but it's moving from a destination-oriented commerce transaction or salesperson-oriented commerce transaction to move beyond capturing a lead or form and pass it to an analog salesperson to a full end-to-end -end digital experience. Absolutely. So can you share where we are in the progression of that, or progress of that uh, shift? Because you know, it's the non-linear consumption of data or assets are happening. And so that's engagement, but it's coming in and in from different channels, out from different channels, and the progression to a transaction is really kind of that journey or the transformation. Where are we on that, on that spectrum of <laughs> getting better, first inning, <laughs> early days, whatever, what can, how can you peg a, peg a progression? We're getting better, we're getting better. But it's still quite, it's still quite hard, because if you look at it, in the, in the past 10 years, we've thrown all this technology at marketers and said, all right, you guys go figure it out. And in terms of delivering on that experience, there's two, t two really tough things that you have to focus on, the data gathering and the analysis. So you need other skill sets to come to the table to help with that. And so that also brings other technologies, other skills to be able to understand how things work. Mobile Vita that won Best Emerging, they understood how customer buying patterns predict the third buying process. Right? and they sell mobile accessories. You don't land on something like that overnight. You have to try, yeah. you have to monitor, and then you have to analyze. So you have to look at buying cycles over a period of time, and not everybody has the skills or the tools to be able to do that. One of the phenomena that's interesting is that the agency relationship to companies trying to be digital is kind of a middleman, if you will. Sometimes people are going direct to their customers right. with digital, that's one. And the other one is that content marketing is becoming more instrumental but it's very hard to do. You see content companies failing out there today, you know, uh, but it's, and you got software platforms out there, so it's hard to win the customer as a content provider. Have you seen, what's your view on that? Because people think, oh, I'll just hire some journalists and I'm in the content marketing business. 
you or I'm going to hire someone to write some good stuff, but it's still company literature. How are people winning the audiences from a content marketing standpoint? Can you share any color on that you might see? Yeah, so I, I think in order for you to win the content conversation, it has to be about the customer. So you, it can't be about you and what you provide, it has to be about them. There was one story that I read where the customer basically said, we tried to offer them products and they tested it and they said, let's talk about how you need to do your job. And they organized their web and their asset experience around the customer and took that perspective and saw increased engagement, better retention. So it's, it's organizing around your customer and talking to them. Wine.com that won our content marketing award looked at your personas based on the wines that you bought and knew whether you were emerging or a mature drinker or a sparkling and your content and they used the real estate and made sure you got a personalized experience. So it can't be about you. So they maximize the impact of the content consumption based on what data they can get on the person's persona slash interest or relationship. Absolutely. And they have to have a sense as to how they want the relationship to evolve. And so that need, they, they have to connect those pieces and then you have to get the organization rallied around it and say, this customer is at this phase of our relationship, they should only get this content, which is actually the hard thing to deliver on, and it's why people fail. Yeah, and you miss fire on the content, you miss an opportunity to engage the customer. Adrian, thanks for spending the time to come on theCUBE, I really appreciate it, I'll give you the final word. What is this show all about this year? So the folks watching virtually in our digital experience called theCUBE are interested. What's happening on the ground? Share some excitement, what's, what's the big thing from last night? What are people talking about in the hallways? What's the big, big, big uh, activities here? Customers are so excited about the close of the Marquee Awards. They loved Bastille. Um, there's tons of people right now in the Solutions Center talking to our partners, talking to our sponsors. Inspire, they want that Marquee next year. So that's the buzz that I'm hearing and what I'm seeing on Twitter. And people are really excited about the parties tonight and the sessions and Tyra Banks on Thursday. People are excited and Marquee's uh, hyphen Awards. Awards.com is the site, check it out. Submit your markets next year. This is theCUBE, Adrian Chang here from Oracle, sharing his perspective on Oracle Marketing Cloud from a customer awards and customer perspective. Thanks for taking the time. We'll be right back with more live coverage of SiliconANGLE's theCUBE after this short break.